This is a Talk Station original podcast. On this week's episode of the Paper Boys podcast, JJ and I talk to Mr. West Carteret himself, Gordy Patrick. We name our Mount Rushmore picks for the four best coaches and athletes in the school's 59-year history, talk about the Patriot wrestling program he started from scratch, and hear about his journey from teacher to administrator. It all starts right now on the Paper Boys podcast. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Paper Boys Podcast. I'm J.J. Smith. And I'm Zach Nally. We're reporters with the Carter County News Times. We are not joined, as always, by our producer, Ross Caraway, but he'll make us sound uh, smarter later on. Well, he'll do his best to make us sound smarter later on. But we are joined in studio today by a man who's got an entire athletic complex named after him at West Carter High School, Mr. D. Gordon Patrick. Thank you for being with us, sir. Glad to be here. I'm not going to be able to call him Gordy. Are you going to be able to call him Gordy? He's always Gordy to me. Okay, so you can call him Gordy. I think it was around the school. That was part of the culture. I mean, yes, like I, I know a lot of adults call him, like people who are a generation above me call him Mr. Patrick. Uh huh. And that definitely is part of who he is. But I think for people my age, it was Gordy. I think you had reached a level where you were... <laughs> it was like Cher or Madonna. That's right. It, it became a single name. name celebrity. Yeah. <laughs> Just Gordy. Yeah, well, there's lots of Mr. Patrick's in this world. There's only one Gordy. Oh, there you go. Well, maybe I, I, I answered all of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what's, what's, what's the D stand for? D. Gordon Patrick. I don't tell you about oh, no, oh, that's a secret. Oh, okay. Well, that's an investigative piece we're going we'll to have to do look in the for future. We'll have to look for that uh, insight put our, later. Put our journalist hats on and uh, find out what that is. So the other day on, on Facebook, I think Michael Turner, the current West Carter Athletic Director, gave a shout-out to Mr. Patrick, wished him a happy birthday, and said that when they build the Mount Rushmore of West Carter Athletics, he'll be the first face they chisel. A hundred percent. So that's Michael for you. <laughs> so that got me thinking about Mount Rushmores. Then that's a big popular thing now to say the Mount Rushmore of sports, of music. You're talking of, about who are the four who are people? The four people. If you were to say the face of West Carter that's Athletics right. since they opened. So I was wondering about student athletes first. Okay. Just limited to that. And I came up with four pretty quick. I want to see if you and Mr. Patrick are on. And that's tough because a lot of these student athletes became coaches. That's true, too. Mm-hmm. Okay. But I want to see if y'all are on the same page as me. And West Carter started in 1964. Is that right? 64, fall, 65? Fall, fall 64. Four, fall 64. So it's been around for a okay, while. Okay, okay. So here's my four. Okay. Vaughn Johnson. Definitely. Mindy Ballou. Oh, yeah. Fitzpatrick. Those two, I think, are already starting to, they're already starting to chisel. Yeah, those are the first two names that come to mind. Yeah. Lonnie Chisholm. Mm. Yeah. And then the fourth one is interesting. I went with Blake Dodge. Okay. But I think probably a many a person could probably make an argument for Roy Heverly. Which <laughs> you're right. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, the four names you're mentioning are all past a certain, or the second half of this 50 years of, yeah. or 50 plus years of West Carter history. The, the Vaughn and Wendy in the 80s. Yeah, that's right. Lonnie in the half oh, aughts. The, the aughts, that's right. right. That's and right. Blake in the teens of that's the right. 20s. Yeah. Roy, Roy is the 80s, right? Roy Heverly in the 80s. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So there's my four, and I could see somebody making the <laughs> argument for Roy, but okay. I put Blake. Now, is, there, is that it, do you think? I don't, I don't think there's anybody else that comes to mind for me personally. I'm not as plugged into the history of West yeah. Carteret. But when you bring so up... says the West Carteret yeah, graduate. I, well, look, I, didn't, I was a band kid, okay? <laughs> Forgive me, folks. Uh, we also won competitions, but... We'll talk about that about, yeah, about right. more on another podcast. <laughs> That's right. But, no, when you, you bring up the first two, Mindy and Vaughn, those have to be unassailable. Those, those are the locks. They've already started chilling those faces. Right. That's right. Uh, but beyond that, I, I, I think it's probably you could make arguments for different people. What do you think, Mr. Pat? Did I miss anybody? I think Roy was at 84. Uh-huh. And he won a state title as a freshman and then as a senior, right? He won two state two titles. States. And that was back in the day when you had to wrestle. Wrestle everybody. There was no... You were the best. Yeah. When you said you were the state champion. I meant for all the classes. Right. You were the state champion. Of whatever weight class you were, you were the state champion. Okay, so now we'll go to the coaches. All-time Mount Rushmore of West Carter coaches. Okay. Mr. Gordon Patrick. That's obviously number one. We're already starting to chisel one. his face on Mount That's Rushmore. Right. That's right. <laughs> of West Carter. Well, I don't know. Where, where's this Mount Rushmore going? Is this like Shackleford Banks? We're doing like sand sculptures? Yeah, I think it's got to be into the, into the uh, yeah, the escarpment. <laughs> um, Mr. Billy Widgeon, Mr. Patrick's old running pal. And then the other two mm. get tough. 
I think, and I'll embarrass them because they're current, I think it might be two people on the staff right now. Interesting. I think it might be Shelton Mayo. Oh, man. Who's got a gazillion conference championships. That's a great point. <laughs> At one point, his girls' cross-country team won 18 in a row conference championships. I think you're if right. If you didn't do anything else besides win 18 conference championships in a row. That's, that's a lot. But you've done pretty good. Regional championships out the wazoo. They've finished top five in the state, top ten in the state. And then if he keeps at it for a little while and they keep winning these conference championships and some deep playoff runs, maybe Michael Turner. I think that's, that's a pretty good one. I, I hate mean, to say that. The volleyball gonna, team has done well. going to give him a big head. Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> now, Gannon Talbert, I don't really know that much about him, Mr. Patrick. He was more Moorhead City, though, wasn't he? Yeah. Than he, West Carter. He taught the old school. He, he was one of my teachers. Okay. So he tells you how old he was. <laughs> He wasn't at West very long, I don't think, was he? No. No. I don't I don't know who else there is. Well the problem if you take if you take assistant, girls, boys, everything, Mark Mansfield, he's got a nice, really good room. Uh, he does, he does. He was twenty four years, I think, when he stepped down last year. Yeah. Yeah, you're looking for longevity. That's, and... you've got to have some longevity. You gotta have some success. And sustained success. Not yeah. necessarily spikes here and there, but I'll tell you mm. somebody. Phyllis Willis. Oh, that's a good one. Maybe that's a name. Can't argue with that. But I looked her up. She was only there about 10 years, I think. Okay. That's a decent time, but it's not the 15, 20, mm. 25, like mm. some of these folks. But a state, when you got a state championship on your resume, not a lot of coaches at West Carter have won well, a state Well, and you have to imagine that Turner will be coaching for a, a while longer. I and, assume. And if he maintains the level of success that he's had so far, then, then yeah, I mean, yeah. regardless of, you know, state championships and things like that, although we're going to eight – classifications you never know uh there's going to be some opportunities well, coming up for our county teams to reach levels they maybe hadn't reached before because there's more opportunities too all right well let's talk about why mr patrick is the first name that goes on the list so if, you, if you're not familiar with gordy patrick he is the first wrestling coach at west carter high school they went 201 wins 26 losses five ties from 65 to 84. That was a nice little seven-year run there where they went 77, 0, and 3. They won 17 of the next, after the first year, after that, the following 18 years, they won 17 of those 18 conference championships. Mm. Finished in the top six at the state meet six times during a 12-year period. Finished in the top 16 12 times. And Mr. Gordy was, Patrick was named Coach of the Year in the state in 1983. Wow. So that's a pretty good resume. Thank you. So, Mr. Patrick, my favorite story about you and being the wrestling coach is when I asked you one time what your um, background was in wrestling before you got that job, and you said what? I never wrestled. Right. So that was interesting. <laughs> Why, you had taken a course? Yeah, I took one course. Uh-huh. And that was enough to teach you how to keep score. <laughs> <laughs> how to, how to, the, the points, what they meant and stuff. Uh-huh. Yeah. That, that's about all you knew. That's about it. <laughs> well, and wrestling wasn't a, a, a well established sport in the state at that point, right? I mean, it was all fairly new. <laughs> they, they were growing very rapidly. Okay. Really? Okay. Our, our first year, we were one and five. Okay. So took your licks. And after that, we figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> Evidently. <laughs> Well, one and five tells you right there. There probably wasn't a lot of teams around to play to to wrestle. You only wrestled six matches that year. That wasn't you weren't had a lot of competition around, did you? No, yeah. uh, that came down my getting involved with it. Period. Mister Nelson, my principal, said you got to have a second sport. I said I don't play rainbow sports. He said, Well, what can you do? <laughs> I said I don't know. I had to think about it. So I don't remember why I went that direction. I think it was to keep my football players in shape. Oh, nice. So the principal said you had to have a second coaching position. Yeah. That's how you ended yeah. up as a wrestling That's coach. That's how I ended up with it. Yeah. And out of that career, uh, Mr. Patrick is now in the North Carolina High School Athletic Association Hall of Fame. He's in the North Carolina chapter of the National Wrestling Hall of Fame. Mm. Also led a number of wrestlers to state championships, people like Larry Horton, Tommy Day, Pete Horton, Roy Heverly. He also had seven wrestlers that were state runners up. He had ten wrestlers that earned third. What 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 would you think was the thing that made it so successful so quickly after that first year when you went one and five? 
it just seemed the boys just bought into the program. Never once did I have to kick a kid off for misbehavior as after, after 19 years. So it, it worked out pretty good for us. What, what, did you, what did you tell your wife when you went home the first night you got the job and said, I'm the, I'm the new wrestling coach at West Carter High School? Uh, believe it or not, she said it's good to get you out of my house. <laughs> <laughs> Keep I, you busy. I, I just got married. Okay. So she had plenty of to-dos. Uh, plenty, plenty of honey-do list. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so the spring was the only, only season you had off, huh? Yeah, that's right. Okay. What was the time period in your life when you knew, obviously you didn't know you were going to be a wrestling coach, but when did you know you wanted to be a teacher and you wanted to be a coach? Sophomore in high school. Okay. What, what, what was the inspiration, you think? Coach Norman Clark, Coach David Lee, uh, both of who are gone now, but, but they, they, they can entice you to go out for a sport and stay. Yeah. It worked pretty good. Were you born and raised in Moorhead City? Yes. So who were the guys you looked up to when you were growing up as far as county athletics? Give us some old school names that we've probably never, never heard of. I don't think I can help you with that. <laughs> how, about, uh, how about college and pro? Who were you looking up to back in the days when you were growing up? Were you an athlete fanatic? Were you all about sports or, or you just did it to have something to do? I was all about sports, but I wasn't a fanatic. No, you weren't watching it all the time <laughs> and keeping up with it. No. I got gotcha. you. In 1959, you could buy a new house on the coast for about $12,000, a new car for $2,000, and fill it up with gas for only 25 cents a gallon. Everyone was cruising the beach listening to the platters, the coasters, and a young guy named Elvis. And when it was time to eat, they all ended up at Elle's Drive-In in Moorhead City. For over 60 years, Els has been serving up our world-famous super burgers, shrimp burgers, oyster burgers, and our mouth-watering fried chicken and barbecue. This coastal tradition of great food and friendly and fun customer service means Els is proud to be serving our third generation of regulars. And we're not done yet. Drive in and pick your spot under the old oak trees next to the hospital in Moorhead City. Then prepare your taste buds for a coastal tradition like no other. Providing the best food, service, and atmosphere in Moorhead City since 1959. Elle's Drive-In, next to the hospital in Moorhead City. So Gordy mentioned Norman Clark um, in 1957. Gordy was the team captain and the starting center and starting middle linebacker on the 1957 state championship team at Moorhead City. Do you think back on that, 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 those days often? Oh, yeah. Yeah. All of the guys who played that year, we're, we're still contacting now. Uh, so, yeah. Did you all ever get together, have reunions? Uh, just class reunions. Oh, okay. What, what was your height and weight that year, do you reckon, Mr. Patrick? Oh, I was a, I was a big boy. <laughs> About five foot ten, 160. <laughs> Start and center, start and middle linebacker. Sure, that's a little different back then, too. Yeah, 5'10", 160. Yeah. And what class was Moorhead City then? Do you remember? Uh, all, 12. Started at kindergarten going on through 12, and then they moved us down here. And you were the Eagles? Yeah. Moorhead City Eagles. Um, so the Eagles gave up 12 points in seven regular season games. Well, you've done your research, haven't you? Yeah, I, looked, I, looked, I had to go back to some old newspapers. <laughs> uh, yeah, I imagine so. So I guess we were a defensive team. Is that what we were? Yeah, we were pretty good. Yeah. Well, they delivered five shutouts in those seven games. They beat Wallace Rose Hill 19-14 to in the district playoffs, then whooped up on Massey Hill, who I, I don't even think is a team, a school anymore, 31-6 to in the regional. In the Eastern final, they beat Fuquay Springs, 22 to 12, captured a state title with a 27-13 win over Mount Holly. Mm -hmm. Mr. Patrick, you've been around. I don't think any of those schools. Are I was going to say anymore. all those names of schools <laughs> are different now. Well, so is Moorhead City High School. Well, so Moorhead, more Moorhead City High School. There you right. go. Does any of those games rem remind you of a particular? The Mount Holly game. The Mount Holly game. That was a ball club. They knock you on your butt in a heartbeat. <laughs> where was the state championship? Do you remember? Where was it? Yeah, where was it? I, but back back then, I think they did a. East and West. We we had all four teams that had to win to be state champions. Uh huh. We were at four different places. 
I'm trying to remember. I've done some stories on those teams back in the day. Uh, Powers. Richard Powers. Richard yeah. Powers. Yeah. Yeah. He went to East Carolina on a scholarship, broke his leg. Okay. Uh, but he, he was also one of the team captains. Okay. Um, Wick Heiser, was he on that team? He was before us. He was before you. Okay. And that was a that was a special time in Carter County. You all won a state title in 57. Beaufort was the year before, the year after. The year after, I think. year after. They win a state title in football. And, of course, they had that crazy run in basketball. Yeah. Where they were winning state titles. That, there were some athletes, I guess, back in your day. Yeah. There were some good ones back there. What was the – and Norman Clark, uh, we did a story on him not too long ago. Um, what tell us about Coach Clark and what kind of coach he was? No nonsense. And if you didn't like him, he chest chest punch you. <laughs> if you did something to irritate him, you'd rather have that than have him do the sprints because he would run us to death. So, but it paid off. I was going to say the conditioning. You think Does that make a difference? Oh for yeah. Yeah. yeah, of course I'm a fitness freak, so I would say that. Yeah, and but, I remember the story we did. They talked about you talked about him punching the chest, which I don't think you'd probably get away with. I was gonna say uh, there weren't a whole lot of gentle coaching going on back then, <laughs> like there is now, maybe. It was a different animal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I remember some of the stories in the story we did when he passed. Was um, he, he was a real big guy, real strong guy. Very much so. He'd get in the huddles with you, get on the fields with you, do some drills. How long were you the football coach at West Carter? Twice. Two different sections? Yeah. Five. If I remember correctly, I did five. And then I sat out a couple of years. And they ran in personnel problems over at school. So they asked me to come back. Okay. And I went back and we, we did it fair. We, did, we weren't what we'd been before, but. That's because I was trying to be an administrator and a head coach at the same time, and there's not enough hours in the day. Right. Plus, I had my wrestling team on the side. <laughs> now, of course, you did. You say you you know weren't quite as good here and there, but you did pretty good against the old folks across the bridge there, East Carteret. Um, uh, got the mullet bucket record at seven one and one. He's got the best record, right? Uh, of, of any football, although Barrow's got to be getting yeah. close to that. Yeah. Um, He's done pretty well himself in that respect. You've but got the best winning percentage of any county coach in the mullet bucket. 7-1-1. One, 7-1-1. One. One, one. Do you have any particular fond memories of that mullet bucket game? No, they were all fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> People have been turning out in this county for mullet buckets for a long time. Yeah. Before the John Lancaster years and the Todd Nelson years and the Daniel Barrow years, up until up until then, Ed Hyatt had the record for West Carter coaching at 8-3. But uh, Gordy was right behind him. One year they went seven, three, and one. That was in '67. Yeah. Uh, '68 you went seven and three. So y'all had some good teams back in the day. In football, like any other sport, you project what you want to be at the end of the season. And we were pretty good, but not not, not, not uh, second place. I didn't care for it too much. <laughs> was Havelock back in your conference back then? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, people kind of, you know, are kind of critical of West Carter because a few years ago they won a conference championship. That was 57 years, right? Wasn't that, wasn't that the number it had been? It was the first year of the school. It had been since the first year of the school first opened. First year of the school. That's right. And people are all like, oh, gosh, West Carter, it's not very good at football. It took him almost 60 years. It's like, well, when you're in the same conference as Havelock every year. Well, that's yeah. why this conference was, was made. It was <laughs> to give opportunities to folks to, right. to win basketball, right. conference championships, football conference championships. and uh, you know, Back in the day, it was uh, when you lined up for the football season. Unfortunately for everybody else, is who's going to finish second, right? Right. Right. Havelock had it, had it locked down. Wes Craven, was that in your conference back in the day? Yeah. Who were some of the top – Football players that you coached? Bill Jackson, my quarterback. Okay. John Rose. So you were at West Carter mm. for 38 years. What point did you start having to, you, you mentioned just a minute ago, what point did you have to start juggling administrator? After 10 years on oh, the wow. field. Were you a vice principal then? Is that what it was? Yeah. A vice principal. I spent 10 years being vice principal for John Nelson, who started me 
and the wrestler. How were you a vice principal and a coach at the same time? Well, they, they got called pretty quick by the central office. They said, you know, you got to do one of the two. Wow. Okay. So I had to make a choice. Yeah, I would imagine that'd be pretty tough. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Patrick, 38 years at West Carter, teacher, vice principal, principal. He was named Outstanding Young Educator of the Year. He was selected principal of the year in the county three times. As I said, the County Board of Education named the athletic fields at the school as D. Gordon Patrick Athletic Complex. Is that is that a little humbling, a little embarrassing when you walk out there and see your name on that every time you walk out there? <laughs> covers his eyes. Uh, it, it, keeps you, it keeps you humble when when your peers think enough of you to vote you into anything or everything. I, uh, I had some real good friends in administration. It's been a good run. You spent, what, a couple years in Beaufort? Is that right? Three. Three years. Beaufort Middle School. Across the bridges. Yeah. Had to come, then had to come back quick. <laughs> also, one of the top, uh, you know, feathers in Mr. Patrick's cap is his last, I think probably your last hire maybe as an administrator because you said your last year was 2007. I remember I did the story. I remember me and Dennis, I had just gotten hired at the News Times and uh, Wes Carter had hired a football coach, which is always big news. And uh, Dennis was like, well, come here, I'll go with you and I'll help you, you know, do a story on, I think I'd been on the job a few months and it was me and Dennis and Mr. Patrick and Craig McClanahan and they had hired John Lancaster as a football coach. And Wes had been on some... Look, as someone who graduated at that exact time, <laughs> for years I joked, I think we went like 1 in 21. It was 1 in 21. So that I, I got it right. I, I joked about that for years, that we'd gone 1 in 21 my junior and senior year, and they had pep rallies. And they were not peppy. I'm gonna tell you, <laughs> they would they would say, "Let's hear from the freshmen," and you'd hear a nice, ah, you know, and you'd hear from the sophomores and, and the juniors, and then down to the seniors, and it was just crickets. And that was just it wasn't you know the, the band was program was strong at the time, and we used to joke people would would come to the football games and they'd all leave at halftime after and the. That was true. Uh, see, there you go. That's confirmation from Mr. Patrick yeah. right there. <laughs> Uh, were, the, were those the saddest pep rallies ever? No, they, it was tough. Um, and I know this because uh, I got to play uh, Pete the Patriot uh, my senior year. There's a scoop. There's a scoop right there, I never, folks. I've never heard that story before. I put that old smelly hat, uh, 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 Patriot hat, on my on my head and <clears throat> did the whole, you know, let me hear it from the back. And, um, yeah, it was, it was tough. It was, you know, you had to be more entertaining than – than Peppy was, for the football team. Was, right. you see out of that thing? Yeah, you could see out of it. Okay. And um, at the time, I was uh, I was also a theater kid, and we would have we would do skits uh -huh. during pep rally. That was the, really the only way to to provide some sort of a uh, of a celebratory thing. Was and I, I forget different. We did different things where you throw things at Pete the Patriot. We had another guy. Uh, he was the leader of the student section, and his name was Pat Riot because yeah. Patriot. Right. And he would be the the, the hype guy, and um, it, was, it was those were fun times. Did you have? Uh, were you there when Joe Play was there? Uh, I don't, um, as a as a teacher or as a principal. Both. So when I started this job, I believe he was no 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 he wasn't the principal yet. Yeah, it was Carolyn. Carolyn Heller. Yeah, Carolyn Heller was still the principal. Um, yeah, well Joe could turn on that student body. I'm sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, and that, that, that was a challenge, but he could do it. Oh, he had the, he had the fire. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he, he has to change a bit. Ever wonder where the capital A and Chick-fil-A came from? It started with grade A, top quality chicken. But we believed everything, not just the food, should be grade A. My name is Jake, and I work at Chick-fil-A Hickory Flat. To me, the A in Chick-fil-A is for above and beyond. It's about making sure that our guests know that we care about them and that we're going above and beyond for them in all the details. The A in Chick-fil-A is for all the little things we do to bring you our best every day. Real team member paid for their testimonial. Mr. Patrick, you were, like I said, you were at West Carter. Oh, you were in the county for 41 years. 38 of those were at West Carteret. I would imagine, and I think I, I, think I have an answer, but I, want, I definitely want to hear yours as far as athletics were concerned from you know, the time you started. What, what was your, 59? Is it, is it, you graduated in 58. You graduated at West, you graduated from Moorhead City High School in 1958. Yeah. So you, four years at East Carolina, is that right? Yeah. 
So you started? I, I was in the Coast Guard Reserve for six years. Oh, yeah. wow. How about that? I didn't know that. So you started at West right when it, you, the first year of West Carter? Was that your first year? They opened up in the fall of 64. I started to work fall of 65. Wow, 65 to 2007. What are some of the things that stand out to you the most as far as changes in athletics over that time? Um, one of the things I think of is Title IX, you know, the girls. Yeah, yeah. Back in, back in the early days, what, the girls, the, they had it so the girls didn't even play full court basketball. <laughs> they could have way to stop, pass it over by this fellow. <laughs> yeah, they, they pass it over the half yeah. court line, right? Yeah. Well, the, the sad thing was the people making the rules did not understand that girls can get in condition just like boys. Uh-huh. And as a result of that, they held the girls down for a while. Absolutely. And you saw you saw you saw the county go from that to yeah. now girls playing everything, yeah, including girls wrestling. How about that? Uh, I'm not familiar with that. <laughs> that wasn't that wasn't back in your day, was it? Uh, not, not at all. And, and not only Title IX adding so many more opportunities for girls, but just the opportunities for student athletes as a whole. I think back when you probably started after the first year of West Carter, you, what was the sports? Football, what? F- football, basketball, and baseball. That's it. That's all I remember. <laughs> I think that you're right. I think that's all there was. Yeah. And, and wrestling, they added. Well, they added that, yeah. yeah. And now we have seven or eight sports every season. Yeah, it's it's a lot. And now with girls wrestling, almost every sport has its... Boys and girls. Boys and girls, yeah. yeah. It's 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 a lot. Every every season there, and especially when you go back to that post-COVID year where they were all pretty much crammed from... January to July, but it was just endless, just sports everywhere. Um, and it, it is different now. Um, yeah. And I imagine there might be, you know, like Wes Carter got his first dive team. That's right, they're diving. Yeah, I hadn't even thought about that. So, yeah. I mean, like, there, I imagine or more, or uh, beach volleyball is. is swimming, though. Sure. That wasn't a thing back in the day, was it? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> they, they struggle to find places to swim now. I know they would have struggled. If, if I remember correctly, We've got 31 teams out there now. Wow. Maybe more than that. Uh-oh. I haven't kept up with the statistics. We were mentioning swimming, and it just reminds me that uh, I'm sure a lot of people would argue that Chip Peterson deserves to be on that. Oh, that good. Absolutely. Good point. Oh. Yeah. So he was like 2006. Yeah. Um, there was there was a group of people then at that point, Lonnie Chisenhall, right. Matt Dodge. Right. Chip Peterson, Jimmy Waters. Jimmy Waters was, I thought he was going to be president one day. <laughs> that guy was, I mean, he was the smartest cat I'd ever met. Um, there was definitely, that was what, the class or two before me was uh-huh. an extremely impressive Just class. Yeah. yeah. With, with with athletic talent. Yeah, um, that, that swimming, that was a big thing. I, I don't know how long, we, I don't think we've ever done the research. Volleyball. Volleyball. And now they're talking about adding men's volleyball at some point, maybe. Well, and we, we don't we don't cover it, but it takes place beach volleyball. Right. I mean, Crotane has a beach volleyball team. Um, it's out there. I mean, you've got. I mean, it's not a school team, but sailing uh, could come back in some way, shape, or form in the future. Yeah. Did they ever have? They didn't ever had like school surf teams. That would be pretty cool. Yeah, the, or, or rowing. Sure. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But now there's boys lacrosse. There's girls lacrosse. And back in the day, you, you had football, basketball, baseball, and then they added wrestling. Boy, you, you got a feel for these athletic directors today that are, <laughs> are uh, schedule wizards when it comes to balancing uh, all those things. That's very true. And, and Master Patrick, you know, retired in 2007, but you've been, I mean, me and you have seen him out there ever since. That's right. You still wanted to stay a part of it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. The popcorn man. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Usually, you are there at the entrance when I walk up on the side and and, and there next to the popcorn machine. Well, I don't want to get I don't want to get maudlin, but one of the things about getting older is having to say goodbye to, to to old friends. And I did want you to talk a little bit about some of the people. I feel bad every time some luminary, some big name at West Carter passes away. With the first person I almost call every time is is Gordy to get some quotes on this person. Um, but Billy Widgeon, tell us about Billy Widgeon, who is also a North Carolina High School Athletic Association Hall of Famer, won a state title in boys basketball in West Carter at conference championships, regionals appearance. What kind of coach was Mr. Widgeon? He was a classic. His boys believed in him. His boys responded to him. 
and uh, I just hate that we lost him so soon. Yeah, yeah, he was a, he was definitely going too soon. Also, another one, Vaughn Johnson, that we said goodbye to too yeah. soon. Tell us what it was like being out there at West Carter when Vaughn Johnson was out there. Vaughn wrestled for me. He didn't play football for me. Okay. Played wow. football for Robbie Barrow. Oh, okay. Before anything else, he was a gentleman. Beyond that, he would put you in a certain position and hurt you if you didn't respond. Boy, I bet those guys he wrestled against had stories after those years when they would see him on TV. Or playing in the NFL. Yeah. yeah. Like, no wonder that guy beat me up so <laughs> you, <bad. laughs> you, you feel a little bit. I, I got beat by Vaughn Johnson. That's, a, that's something you can wear proudly on your chest. You mentioned him earlier. Oh, we'll mention both those guys, and we talked a little bit about Norman Clark, but uh, we've also we did a big story on Mr. David Lee when he passed away. Tell us about kind of coach and educator Mr. Lee was. He was uh, my hero from when I was in high school. I didn't have a whole lot of educational support. He took me in the room, sat me down. This was in East Carolina. He said, "You finish here, or you don't come home." That's the way he was. I remember you told me back when he passed away that you said you don't think you'd, you'd have got through college if it wasn't for him. I, I think that's a true statement. I think the kids would talk about he would like bend pennies. He could take it. I saw him do this. He could put a penny between two fingers and squash it, bend it in half. Now that's power. And he had played in like the NFL for a little bit, right? Yeah. I think he played a year or two we had in there for the 49ers, I yeah, think. Yeah, he got his knee busted up, so... He didn't get to stay, but he had two years with the 49ers. And, and I remember the, a, a big focus of that story that I wrote was about, you know, how big a man he was, how strong he was. And he was really tough. It could be really tough on kids, but also really a sweetheart. You mentioned about him uh, coaching at Beaufort and putting kids in the car. Well, that's very true. He had one of those ca- cars that opened up the rear, and you look over at the end of basketball practice, and he had them jam on <laughs> Top the other, take them down the highway, one on one. Arms and legs, you said, sticking Arms out the windows. <laughs> that was a sight. <laughs> and then the the one of the last ones we lost again, another one too soon. And I I don't mean to be maudlin, but these are people's names we should talk about and and remember. Uh, Craig McClanahan, who Absolutely. was with you a long time at West Carter. Absolutely. What kind of coach and educator was uh, Mr. McClanahan? He was a pusher. Uh, he was real tough when he had to be. Tough, but but I can't like some of these other ones. Fair, I think. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the word. Well, go. he was always known for advocating for his coaches as well, and absolutely getting them the things they needed um, as an athletic director. And you, you were, were you ever involved with the athletics? You were never athletic director, were you? No, I hired Billy though. Okay, as athletic director, I ought to get some credit. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Finding the right one there. Well, Mr. Patrick, we are so thankful for you and your service to Carter County and education and coaching and for always being so kind to the News Times. Whenever the phone rings, Mr. Patrick picks it up. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Mike Holmes, professional contractor and TV host. I love helping people, but when it came to improving the water in my own home, I needed help and turned to the water experts at Kinetico to make it right. My water was causing visible problems throughout my home, and it got me thinking about the problems I couldn't see. Protecting my water using appliances and pipes, preventing stains and hardness buildup, and having clean, great-tasting drinking water are all important to me. But choosing the right water treatment equipment can be tricky. That's where Kinetico comes in. A Kinetico water expert will test your water for free and recommend the system that fits your needs and budget. Improve the quality of your water and your life with the Kinetico water treatment system. I'm so glad I did. Call Advanced Water Systems today, your local authorized Connecticut dealer. Call 223-4444, that's 223-4444, or 1-800-865-1208. Experts agree, Connecticut treats water best. All right, so we talked earlier about, which is a super fun topic, uh, the Mount Rushmores. Uh, that's a big thing in sports now and in everything. Uh, so we talked about West, and that's plenty of argument, plenty of debate. But we thought we want to throw Easton Croatan in there as well. So we're going to do the four student athletes and the four coaches for each school, the Mount Rushmore, which is four. Okay. All right, here's my four for East Carter. Start with East. Brian Taylor, number one pick in the Major League Baseball draft. That's, Easy pick. That's, that's a lock. Uh, Joe Montford, who went on to South Carolina State. He had a Hall of Fame career in the Canadian Football League. That's 
Those, Gotta do it. Those two are chiseled. LeVar Fisher. Oh, of course. All American, all, all defensive player of the year in the ACC. Plays in the NFL. And Jock Brown, who statistically speaking is the greatest basketball player in the history of probably not only East Carter, but Carter County, if you just want to do pure statistics. Well, not a bad football player either. Not a bad football player. Led the team to a uh, state championship, two state championships, mm. one, one. Mm-hmm. Um, so those are the four. I, I don't think there's any argument, and I, I'm scared to death that someone will be like, you're an idiot. You were missing this obvious person. Um, Tracy Williams was a great basketball player. Um, you know, Logan Lilly was a great basketball player and softball player. Oasis Ellison was a great basketball player and soccer player. Um, you know, they've had some other good football players over the years. Uh, the East has always killed it in basketball, but I think those are the four. Mm. I, don't, I don't think nobody else. Uh, Adela Burney. Mm, Della Burney played, a, uh, she's the, like the all-time leading scorer in girls basketball. She went to NC State on a scholarship. That's pretty good. Uh, that's Tanzania Locklear, who is the star athlete now at East Carter. Um That's her aunt. Um, and there's been other, you know, state champion or state championship caliber athletes. I'm thinking recent memory, someone like a, a Bo Studebaker. Bo Studebaker. He won three state titles? So. Or two? There's three. definitely no, people. He, three. But that, what he played football. Remember, he was the, uh, you know what he was? He was the North Carolina High School. Athletic Association, Male Athlete of the Year in the state. There you go. We've had two of those in the state. We've had two of those in this county, Blake Dodge and him, because he was a football player. He wrestled. He played basketball that year while he wrestled. God, that three- or four-year run in, in the county oh, was. Man. And in the spring, he did. He was the best golfer. He's the best golfer in his Carter history. He played tennis. He did like five. It was, it was a joke. We, want, we wanted to do a photo of him with all these different uniforms on and, and glove on his hand and not glove, he didn't play baseball, but basketball and a helmet on and in a wrestling singlet. Right, right. We got that hooked up, but that would have been amazing. Both to the that's a great pick. Yeah. Mm. But I think those are the four. I think it's Brian Taylor, Joe Montford, Jock Brown, LeVar Fisher. Well, and not to jump ahead, but that's, you know, part of the argument with Croton is that it's only been around for 25 years, and so the, the ability for time to cement certain people oh. as – it's not only what they did in high school, but what they did beyond it. That's, that kind that's, of factors into it. That's easier for East well, Carter because it's been around. You go back around. to West Carter, you know, Lonnie was a baseball player. There mm-hmm. was no fall, winter, spring kind of mm-hmm. thing. But he went on to play Major League Baseball. Yeah, you can't, for like you can't ignore years. that. You're not. Okay, so the uh, Mount Rushmore of coaches for East Carter is Billy Anderson. Led the team to two state titles. Easy. Finals. Won a, won a state championship. Uh, also, back to boys basketball because that's one of East Carter's bread and butters. Uh, Cecil Lilly, who conference championships. Hey, we know that guy. Hey, he's been on the show a couple times. Um, regional finals, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, Donnie Leatherman, who led the football team to the state finals in 83. I might have that wrong. might be 84. Um, and anytime you get a football team in Carter County to a state final, you know, you, you've done something. Uh, and then that fourth spot. That fourth spot is really interesting. you got Jimmy Fadri, who was amazing girls uh, a softball coach. And I think it's him. Um, I think it's him. But then there's, there's, there's a group. There's uh, Antonio Diaz, who led the soccer team to a state final. To a shootout in the state final. We're, we're a play away from Against a it. team, a school that can recruit. <laughs> Charlotte. Sure. Um, yeah, Beaufort versus Charlotte in the state finals. Um, they've been to the regional finals three times in his tenure, two in the last like four or five years. They've won conference championships. I mean, he's got a great resume in, on, the, on the girls' side. And the boys had a great four or five-year run there a while back. Um, there's he and there's Caleb King. Very short resume. Lightning in a bottle. <laughs> but, man, they were good. And East Carter has not had a lot of great football years, and he, he really put that team on the map there for in, in the state, you know, in the eastern part of the state Certainly. for a couple of years. you got Gary Chadwick, um, the baseball coach. They conference championships. They were regional finals. So I think those are those three are kind of in the running for that four spot, but I think it's probably Jimmy Fodry. So, so that's East, and I'm pretty confident about those names. Now we move to Croatan, who you would think would be easier because that school started in 1998, whereas West was 64, East was 65. But for some reason, it's kind of harder, I feel like, even yeah. though it's a short amount of time. Yeah, you got a lot of people that did similarly, especially when you look at things like swimming, 
track and field, cross country. I mean, there are individual athletes at that school. I mean, when I say individual, I mean like five or six who have won eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 state, chi- state championships in between different events and relays, individual. It's very difficult. And as we were doing our research, it occurred to me, I've, I've covered athletics at that school for 10 of its 25 years. Oh, wow. So uh, it's a weird perspective to certainly feels like I probably am biased towards the, the modern, you know, towards my time in the last 10 years. But well, and, and to, to take up for you in your argument, the school has won three, is it? At this point, is it three out of the last four Wells Fargo? Is it That's four out of the last five? I think it's three straight and four of the last five. That's what it is. And, and should be five in a row. Yeah. There's COVID. a couple points. Yeah. So, yeah, they've been one of the best. Oh, that spring was going to be an incredible spring. In the state. So mm-hmm. you, you have a right to be biased that they've had a great run here in the last Yeah, year. but there's also a lot like the wrestling program before I showed up. I mean, they've definitely been very good since I've been here. But You missed the prime. The, yeah, the state championship runs year after year. Uh, but it's definitely – you know, there some of the picks are easy. I'll, I'll say the coaches are fairly easy because okay. with coaching, you're looking for longevity. Right. You're looking for this. This program has been successful for a long time, but the athlete side is hard. So yeah, especially well, because Croatan is an individual sport school. I feel like in terms of what they're good at, yeah. Cross country, track and field, swimming, swimming, yeah, wrestling, wrestling. Yeah, these are yeah. mostly individual accomplishments. Not type. a lot of. I don't know if we have. I don't know if you're going to have any multi-sport athletes on there. It might just be all. Well, spoiler alert. Uh, <laughs> when we did the research for this, uh, we definitely, uh, for me, I favored multi-sport athletes. Yeah. You know, you know, we we, we put people on the uh, Mount Rushmore, other schools that maybe only played one sport, but mm-hmm. because of how Croatan Athletics is engineered, mm-hmm. it it uh it makes sense to to favor those. Let's go. With, you, you said the coaches are easier. Let's yeah. Let's start with them. First. The lock, and I hate to make this a tie between two people, but it's really difficult to separate Andy Bulfer and Rico Kispe in terms of what they've done for the cross country program, for the track and field program. But I am going to go ahead and list them as as a what we'll do a half and half. But it's either Andy Kispe or it's Rico Bulfer. Yeah, however you want to look at that. That's right. (laughs) But it's it's really Andy Bulfer and Rico. Yeah, I mean, how many? uh, Just like Shelton Mayo, like you listed with West Carter. I just they've won back to back boys cross country state titles, and we've never had a cross country state championship in county history. So they won winter state titles. The girls and boys swept one year. That, I mean, my gosh, what they've done is that, and this was already a track and field county, mm-hmm. and they've just taken it to a whole other level. And it's not like it's been the last five years or so; it's been right. a, a long, right. a long tenure. Uh, I think David Perry is probably the first name on that list. I, I should have mentioned him they, first. They start chiseling him right now, right? Yeah, that's that's the one. I mean, the guy has been a coach there since the school opened, uh, twenty five straight years. Uh, wrestling coach, athletic director, um, football coach. And it's done incredible things with with the wrestling program. And obviously, as athletic director, you're there to hire the right people. He's put a lot of the great people in place, and uh, he's still there. He, he's already, I believe, in the North Carolina chapter of the National Wrestling Hall of Fame. He is an absolute lock for the North Carolina High School Athletic Association Hall of Fame. Um, if you're in those two things, you're, you're a lock for the school, your school, Mount Rushmore. Yeah, they, I think they, that. I think they've won four or five state championships as a team. The individuals that have won state titles are off the, the – uh, they – I don't even think they had lost a conference match until maybe your second or third year here, uh-huh, I think. Uh-huh. They had gone from 98 to – I think they lost maybe the first year or something. But after that, it was like from 99 to 2013 or something. How about adding two uh, girls wrestling state championship? How about that? Uh, with, you know, helping coach Angelica sure. Steffi to back-to-back yeah. before she graduated. Yeah, his, his, uh, what, what, what Gordy Patrick, who we had on earlier, he was the gold standard for wrestling coaches in Carter County, and somehow David Perry took that and improved upon it. Yeah, which is hard to do. Yeah, one hundred percent. Then I've got you know Paul Slater, soccer coach, state championship soccer coach, somebody who I think when you look at the gamut of soccer coaches across the state, and it's weird we've got a couple uh, in this uh, in this region. You've got. Um, Oh, Dave Miller. You've and, got and Doug Kidd. Doug Kidd. I mean, these are people who, Big time. yeah, they might be 
close to the modern era of Brown Rushmore of soccer coaches in the state alone. Right. Um, but Paul Slater, obviously, an incredible so- uh, boys programs, a player, incredible girls programs. He's been um, named coach of the year in the state how many times? I guess like two or three. Uh, yeah, he's coached uh, East West. Yeah, uh, uh, Powerade. That's right. Carolina that's right. Clash. Obviously won a state championship with the boys a few years ago. Girls have been in the regional finals twice. So uh, and, certainly deserving on that list. And we mentioned earlier that they could have won another Wells Fargo Cup in there. Missing from Paul Slater. Yeah, and this will come up with the athlete conversation in just a second, but that 2020 spring girls' champion mm. soccer team, uh, nothing will ever convince me they would not have won a, a state championship. Bare minimum, the, nothing. Re- the regional final. Uh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, a state championship. Every single player was back. From it was an unbelievable team. stacked team. Yeah. Anyway, uh, and then my last spot, I'm going to throw Andrew Gurley on there. Okay. This is somebody who, a multi sport coach. Somebody who played at Croatan, uh, has coached the girls' basketball team to uh, several conference championships, uh, took over the football program, and since then has done incredibly well. Um, his overall record took a hit because there was a, a player in eligibility were, that one year. Eight games that year yeah, or, so yeah. you take that away, which was self-reported and is right. you know part of the game, but. His football record is up there with the best in, in playoff, terms of – yeah. won, won a playoff game. Won That's a right. playoff game. That's right. Yeah. Uh, certainly deserving there as well. Absolutely. Student athletes. A little tougher. It's tough. Yeah. I think we spent more – it's funny. We spent more time, I think, on Croatan than we did East and West. And East and West have been be, together a combined 120 years. It's because of the of the, of the, the, the parity that yeah. exists there. So I'm just going to rattle off my four names. Okay. Um, I've got Will Barker, swimmer. Sure. I've got – Aaron Stoll, okay, uh, multi-sport athlete there. Football, baseball. Okay, I've got Sammy Joe Laco, yep, a state championship level track and field athlete as well as a stud at volleyball, and I've got Kelly Haggerty, who was good at every sport under the sun she played. Uh, I'm, you know what? I must say Kelly Haggerty is Croatan's Bo Studebaker in terms of yeah. somebody who just absolutely killed it at every sport they played. Yeah. Yeah. So those are my four. Do you have a different four? So you got Barker. Yep. Haggerty. Yep. Stoll. Yep. And who's the fourth one? Joe Laco. Sammy Joe Laco. I think that might be the list. I think there are others in the running. You've got Michael Kiespe, who Brendan Hodge. Brendan Hodge. I think I think, you know, you did the story on Brendan when he, you know, signed with UNCW. I think he had won eight state titles. Um, I think Michael Kiespe, now granted Michael's most of his were in um, um, relays, but I think he had 10 gold medals. Right. Um, you know, Barker is the most decorated swimmer in Croatian history, so that's a lock. Um, Sammy Joe, she was the first girl in state history to win three consecutive discus state titles. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, you said she's already good in volleyball, too. Yeah, she was, you know, outside hitter or mi- middle hitter for volleyball. Haggerty Laco. Stoll and Barker. And Barker, we haven't mentioned it, multi-state championship swimmer. Oh, yeah. He, I think he won like 12, I think. I mean, it was it was unbelievable. He, um, I'll give you the exact number right. He won nine state championships. Yeah, come on. He had 13 podium finishes. Yeah, that's at first, the state level. First, second, or third. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't, I think that, I think you're pretty good. And, and Aaron Stoll went to Virginia on a baseball scholarship, um, you know, um, quarterback for the football Pro-tans team. Pro known for this running, running. <laughs> they throw it two times a power, game. Power, power. <laughs> the years that he was there, they threw it. I think he threw for 2,000 yards when he was there. Um, you know, he, th- he 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 had like 125, 150 strikeouts. Mm-hmm. His ERA was minuscule. Um, you know, anytime you're, you're recruited to play baseball at ACC school, you know, you've You've done well. I, I'm sure there's other people we could throw in there. Croatan, Kaylee Hansen was a great track. Absolutely. And field. They've got um, um, you know people that are doing it now that are doing great in track and field. But I think I think your list is probably it. Yeah, and there's other coaches too we didn't mention. So you talked about lightning in a bottle with Kalo King, uh, uh, Dexter. Dexter Williams. Uh, obviously had a great two or three year run there. The best basketball run they've ever had. Uh, Michaela Edge sla- uh, turned uh, Michaela Warsinger. She took the uh, edge off. Yeah, she did. <laughs> uh, incredible swimming coach for Croatan. So, yeah, that's one of those where I did a column a few years ago that they're building their sports culture right now. And so it's hard to look at that and know who will stick out the most in a few years. But I think that's that's a pretty good uh, Mount Rushmore for those two schools. Thank you. If, uh, if, you, uh, if you think we, we failed horribly on those three schools. Let us know. Let, let us know.